I knew I like U.S. Grant. Come on, take those forts. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me, as always, is Prospector Johnny. And the and Johnny, good week this week. More good, good news? Week. We've had a good week last week. We had a good week the week ah. before. Which is it's just it's just good. It's just good weeks. Uh, good weeks to be yeah. had. 1862 is turning out to be our year. This yeah, you know, year. if it weren't cold as balls outside, I'd be pretty happy right now. But <laughs> uh, it's winter. Yeah, we'll deal with that. But at least we're having some good news to keep us warm. I assume the Confederates are. Uh, losing things or on the run yeah. or doing something bad or I perfect don't know. opportunity to do a recap. Another month is going to end. Another month is going to begin. War is still raging on, but progress is being made out in the West specifically. Several victories, including uh, breaking the Confederate line in Kentucky, paired up with land invasions in the Carolinas, a strong stranglehold on the coastline uh, through our <laughs> Anaconda plan, which is coming into fruition, all the way down through oh, Florida yeah. and the Gulf. Uh, a lot of uh, dirty rebel pirates are getting caught left and right in this blockade. So. Uh, it seems like this war is probably going to be over this year. I mean, we I have, we're, we're we starting keep, to control keep... the Mississippi. Yeah, we keep saying, but yeah. I mean, eventually we're going to be yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, eventually, eventually it's going to end. It can't uh, last forever. It, it, yeah, we, we got, yeah, but like you said, in the, in the recap, we got we got control of the Mississippi in a lot of areas. We got uh, forts taken over in the South and in North Carolina, South Carolina, all that. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Looking good. We're, we're, yeah, one one or two more major pushes in, in this war is this war. Not to mention the Confederates are already struggling with some. They don't have we've stuff. That, we've seen that in the last couple of battles that we've had. Like like this is you know, there's a battle two weeks ago. They're fighting with with you know, flintlock muskets. It's like, <laughs> way to go. I mean, with uh, yeah, they're they're they, their supplies are dwindling. That cotton's not gonna feed anybody. And uh, yeah, cotton can't feed anybody if it can't get out and get sold. They got to so. stop soon. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's uh, finish it up. Maybe, said, maybe maybe within the month. If you, I mean, we're well, uh, we're, we're, we're about ready to be, begin February. So maybe maybe yeah, like in February, February we'll is what I meant. Oh yeah. So with that said, the month of January is going to end. Uh, Lincoln is going to you know he just. Ends it with his uh, general war order that specifically on the 31st, he gives special war order number one to the Army of the Potomac to take and occupy a point on the railroad southwest of the Manassas Junction. You know that area that we lost that really bad embarrassing war? Or battle? The battle, the yeah. The first, yeah, Bull, Bull yeah, Run. The first major. Yeah, Bull Run. That yeah. One. yeah. Well, you went there, Johnny. You saw that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was great. that one. I uh, found a gun there, I think. Yeah, so he wants, he's like, yeah, I want you to occupy the railroad just southwest of there. Lincoln gives McClellan until the 22nd of February to accomplish his task. So take, you know, take the railroad line southwest of Manassas Junction and okay. do it by the end of next month. So by the 22nd we'll see, or the end of by it? The 20, well, the 22nd. That's close enough to the end. Okay. All right. On February 1st, Grant is, frantically, uh, <laughs> Grant is frantically getting his army uh, ready to move out from Cairo, Illinois, this time actually on an offensive. Okay. At the end of last month, on the 28th of January, he requested from General Halleck permission to take Fort Henry from the Confederates. And on the 30th, Halleck was like, hey, you think you can do it? Have at it. <laughs> take it. Just yeah, his, great. Yeah, he just he just had a scouting mission uh, where he got stopped by an iceberg. Uh, oh, right, yeah, had to turn around. They didn't yeah. even bother shooting cannons at it. No, uh, but, but when he got stopped by the iceberg, he was like, hey, there's not that many people in that fort. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I can take it. Yeah, I can take that. <laughs> on uh, on February 2nd and on the 3rd, the fleet begins to move on the Tennessee River towards Fort Henry, okay. uh, leading a, a fleet of gunboats. Uh, the first gunboats were three ironclad gunboats. So this is wood boats with some iron plating on it. So eh, it should be a little bit more impervious to Confederate yeah. gunfire. Followed by three more traditional, like, you know, wooden gunboats. Okay. But not uh, our not our, our all metal one is out on the ocean. That's, no, our all metal yeah, one hasn't. Yeah, because get this, guys, good. we built an all metal boat. I don't know if you. Yeah, heard. yeah, yeah, yeah. We remember that <laughs> yeah. single turret. <laughs> Uh, while all this is going on, on the 3rd, uh, the King of Siam is going to write a letter to, to, to Abraham Lincoln and said, hey, uh, do you want some war elephants? I will totally give you some war elephants uh, for oh, you to use as no, you see fit. No, hold on, wait. Did he get, did we, did we get no, some more? No, he's an asshole. <laughs> what? Lincoln's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with elephants. The climate's not... What am I going to do with elephants? What do you mean? Put what a, are you going to do with put elephants? Put a cannon on them and go, like, shoot things just it's an elephant it's intimidation if nothing else right oh, put an armor plate on that I elephant imagine. and charge it at the confederate lines so he 
<sighs> Lincoln, I'm not a fan of like Lincoln is just he's like he's like I was I, like at the before the war started, I was like, Yeah, Lincoln. And then like every move he I'm just starting keeps to get excited to see who runs against him in the next election, if we have one after Dictator Lincoln decides. That's true. There is a there is a civil war. We might not ever have any more elections, but we'll see how that that's 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 years down the line. We got years, years, years before we have to worry about that. Uh, Lincoln and McClellan are also at odds over the campaign in Virginia. Lincoln wants an overland invasion. McClellan says, hey, why don't we do a naval invasion near Richmond uh, and then move on to the city? And Lincoln's like, dude, I don't know if you've looked at a map, but Richmond yeah. is like right. It's like a two. It's I mean, not- it's like more than a two minute walk, but it's like a two minute walk. Just mm-hmm. just move the troops onto Richmond. And yeah. McClellan's like, no, I want to take a boat around but- and go that way. But why? Just he uh, likes boats. I think, I think he's. I think he's stalling for time as well. Uh, Although okay. to be fair, every naval operation that we've had, like landing operations, been pretty. Been successful, pretty. So yeah, I, our navy is the only reason we're in this war anymore. Yeah, like still, our, right? Yeah, like, our, navy's, <laughs> our, navy's doing, our navy's doing the, on the uh, job. Yeah. On February fourth, Grant begins landing his troops uh, in the rain just north of Fort Henry as his gunboats carry out the oh, reconnaissance God. of the fort. Uh, an odd uh, little bit of a note here. A delegation uh, uh, begins discussing in Virginia the proposal of using slaves as soldiers, of all things. Hold on, wait. Uh, this is, yeah, this is in Virginia. Who, who, uh, who's talking? Who, sev- the North yeah, or several, the, yeah, no, no, the, the South? No, no, the sev- South. Sev- yeah. Several Southern delegates are like, hey, why don't we use our, like, force our slaves to fight for us? Now, they want to force their slaves to fight in order to keep the institution of slavery alive so that they can then when they're done fighting go back and continue. don't worry johnny this is quickly shot down because they're like uh do you know how expensive slaves are i'm not gonna put them in harm's way and mm. and and we can barely count on them to pick our cotton so how on earth are they going to be able to fight <laughs> or how to shoot a gun and and yeah. on top of all that you want to give them guns yeah like you you want to be the, the you're gonna you're, yeah you're gonna line up 15 of them for a little drill and you're going to give all of them guns and lo- teach them how to load them and shoot them and then so stand around them while you do that good luck <laughs> this, <laughs> I mean, this, uh, this hey, idea hey boss this, what are we fighting for oh uh for my ability to keep you enslaved <laughs> yeah this, this idea is quickly shot down doesn't doesn't have much merit to it at all uh there is a uh, a, a note in the richmond examiner newspaper so newspaper in Richmond is basically looking at the situation of the war and going, hey, um, I notice we're not really attacking and I notice we're not having a lot of guns or food. So um, this <laughs> idea of defensive warfare doesn't really work. So why don't we fix that? And they write, and I quote, that Southern people are not sufficiently alive to the necessity uh, necessity to of exertion in the struggle they are involved in, a better to fight even a risk of losing a battle than to remain inactive to fill up in glorious graves. So basically what they're saying here is we don't have the number of men necessary to withstand a siege. Yeah. We are involved in the siege. The Union has specifically basically said, look, we don't care if this war goes on a little bit. We're just going to strangle you out. Yeah. They're, they're basically... And a newspaper is going, yeah. Um, their plan's working. That's going to work. So <laughs> we, should, we, we should probably fight and risk losing a battle than just sit here and, you know, die of starvation. Right. But OK. All right. All right. So the South doesn't have anything right now. If they win and they secede and we just leave them be, how are they going to have anything? Yeah. I mean, they can sell their cotton to England. Uh, I guess we would have to stop making them do or not. Yeah, we can't. Them do that. We can't have an embargo if, mm. if we let them secede. Yeah. There's that, Johnny. All That's, right. Yeah, well, there you go. They would be fine financially if they were able to actually sell their goods. But who's, who's oh. <laughs> who, who, they, If they, if they win, I know who's picking it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> on the 5th, Grant's troops have landed on the, on the shore north of Fort Henry. They are uh, going to operate in conjunction with, uh, with the gunboats on the assault on the 6th. So Grant's troops have now okay. all landed. They are yeah. supposed to move onto the fort as the gunboats start shelling the fort. So yeah, so they're just going to blast at the fort from the gunboats, and then to make everybody go away from cannons or whatever, get away from their stuff, and then people yes. can infiltrate and take over. While all this is going on, uh, Grant sends uh, some of his troops under General C. F. Smith on the fifth to uh, to take. Uh, the West River, uh, where there's an unfinished fort, Fort Hindman, above the bluffs of Fort Henry. Basically, it's an unfinished fort. 
he wants them to take that fort so that they can have a shooting position down onto Fort Henry as well. I mean, think he's going to finish it if they get it? Uh, maybe. Uh, mission is accomplished here pretty easily, though, because uh, Fort's abandoned. <laughs> Oh, well, that's... <laughs> so, ours now. so really what they did is they moved into an abandoned building. They moved into an abandoned building. Uh, and this all happens because Confederate Brigadier General Lloyd uh, Tigman, uh, Tilgman, Tilgman, uh, he's commanding his 3,000 troops and has them all recalled to Fort Henry for its defense. He's like, yeah, that's an un- mm. unfinished... We don't, yeah, do, don't care about that. Tigman. Please come help here. And then that didn't help either. Did we get Fort Henry as well? Uh, uh, was, bear with me. We gotta get there, Johnny. Odd news also on the fifth is uh, is a Copperhead senator from Indiana. And Copperhead, if you don't know what that means, that is a Southern supporting Indianian. Oh, what? Get him yeah, out of here! Who voted well, for this? Well, Johnny, he's he's expelled from the Senate, thirty-two to fourteen, uh, because of his complicity with the enemies of the U.S. He's like, you supported yeah. you said things. You yeah. said things. Did we arrest him and put him in the gallows or no, whatever? No, we just no, we just kicked him out of Congress. Uh, so because he's a politician and not just a normal citizen. Oh, uh, also on the fifth, uh, Queen Victoria. She she at the beginning of the war, she's like, we're not going to trade with either side, right? And now today, she goes, yeah. You guys were go ahead and trade anyways. Like they like all of her private like yeah they're like yeah, yeah they're like, uh, so we we're need like, our money queen <laughs> thank so you very much like, <laughs> so she's like well go ahead and continue including uh, stockpiles of 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 expendable arms munitions gunpowder. Uh, uh, from their own, you know, national armories in England, those are now open to be sold to both sides. Oh, both sides. That's to both. Yeah, they're going to be sold to both sides. Whoever's got the gold and comes forward gets it. So shoot, all those restrictions on England are lifted. So whoever wants to buy it can buy it. Well, the Confederates are flush with cash right now, right? Flush with fake cash, uh, not you know, <laughs> Confederate the cash bucks, right? <laughs> Confederate so, bucks. I'll give you a million of them. <laughs> <laughs> and if we happen to win this war, they might be worth something. Probably not, though. We'll just figure something else out because it's a stupid name for a currency. They're they're backed by cotton that we can't sell you because we can't get it out of right, the shores. Yeah. And Johnny, this week is going to end uh, in a blast, and I mean that quite literally, as the Battle of Fort Henry is going to take place. Okay, here we are. So the stage was set. Of, stage is set. So over the night of the 5th, uh, Confederate Brigadier General Lloyd Tellman decides... Uh, yeah, I'm not in a great position even at Fort Henry. Uh, we've got Fort Donaldson down the river. That is a better fort. It is better defended. I'm going to go ahead and take the vast majority of my troops here and move them to Fort uh, Fort Donaldson. So who's he leaving to die? He's leaving him. This is actually where I give him credit. He's leaving himself and several artillery positions in place. His whole job here at Fort Henry is just to delay the Union Army long enough for his troops to get to, to Fort retreat. Donaldson and set up defensive mm, positions there. Okay. So they, I mean, from the beginning of this, they, they abandoned Fort. They, it wasn't, we didn't win a battle. They abandoned the Fort. There's still some guys there. For now. D- hey, if we can't take, take that over, I mean, good take God. take my victory from me, Johnny. Come no, on No, it's now. a victory. A victory is a victory. It doesn't matter if uh, they let you win. <laughs> and we'll take it. <laughs> Union troops are delayed in their assault by bad weather uh, and muddy roads. Uh, so they don't actually get their assault of the fort done until 11 a.m. So right off the bat, Togman told the soldiers, like, I want to delay him like two hours to give my guys enough time to walk. The mud did that. (laughs) The mud did it already. So he could have, he could have went with his troops and not sacrificed himself. Oh, Uh, so he did. Did he? Well, he doesn't die. No. no, uh, Uh, The battle begins uh, with flag officer Andrew Foote uh, with his four ironclad gunboats leading three wooden gunboats upstream to the fort where they begin rapid firing into the fort as fast as they can. This is like real quick, real effective. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, The Confederates are able to get off 49 rounds during this battle. 49? 49 rounds. Were they conserving ammunition? No, this is just how this is just how short this is just how short this is, Johnny. But the, one of those 49 shots do hit uh, the USS Essex uh, 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 boiler. It hits their boiler. It blows the boiler up, and it does wind up scalding 28 men and oh, putting no. the USS Essex out of commission. So that boat can't really fight the rest of the battle oh, yeah. it's, it's steam is it, engine is blown it's boilers blown is it outside is it the boiler no the round goes through the through hole into and yeah it, got it wow blows what blows. are the odds just a lucky shot i mean good god that's, that's insane 
that doesn't matter because pretty much instantly after that, one of the Union fire uh, rounds fired hits a 32-pound Confederate gun, destroying the gun and killing the crew. Oh. Uh, and shortly after that, another one of the Confederate guns is hit. Wow. Well. Tilgman awesome. himself yeah. uh, surrenders 12 officers, 66 men, and 20 wounded soldiers from from the fort. He lowers the flag pretty much after that second gun gets hit. He's like, yeah, he's like, all right. I all mean, right. come on, guys. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We've lost enough so, people. So 12 officers, including himself, 66 men, 20 wounded soldiers uh, wind up surrendering uh, to flag officer foot. Uh, 15 soldiers do die during the battle. Uh, Union soldiers do die during the battle. The, 15 Union were, soldiers die? A lot of those were the uh, the guys off the boiler. From the boiler, yeah, that makes sense. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 15 Confederate soldiers die. 11 oh. uh, Union soldiers die. Eleven. Most of those were the, the, the boiler. Uh, 31 okay. more were wounded. Uh, Grant's 15,000 men actually don't... <laughs> make it to Fort Henry before Fort Henry surrenders. They're, <laughs> they're, they're just pulling up on the boats like, hey guys, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> they, they walk up and it's like, oh, oh yeah, damn Martin, it, we yeah, missed yeah. it. <laughs> we missed it. So, uh, they leave any of the food here or what? <laughs> uh, well, what they do, uh, what they do do is they get the, they get the fort. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a passable enough fort. Uh, but if you remember like when we were talking about these forts being built, like they were built as far north as the Confederates could at yeah. the time. And so they're not really on the best positions in the river, but right. Uh, it was just kind of where they could get them. and they were hastily thrown together forts. But so basically, which is know, why they, it was abandoned and they were, went to a better position than the Confederates yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, there's only one more obstacle now on, you know, go, for the union going into Tennessee, which is Fort Donaldson, which is now on green. Grant's, Grant's got his eye on it, but we're gonna have to wait next week to see how uh, to see how that turns out. That's it for this week in Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoyed Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight, where we talk about all kinds of fun things like the Transcontinental Railroad and how Congress has always been accepting bribes and getting away with it. <laughs>